What's going on, everybody? Robert Virginia Geekdoms here, and do I got a show for you today? Today, I'm interviewing John Engel from Three Rivers Comic Convention. He's one of the minds behind creating this whole event in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's also a regional manager of New Dimension Comics, which is a pretty large comic book store chain within the area. It was an absolute treat and pleasure to sit down and talk with him and really pick his mind about what his intentions and their intentions are when it comes to the comic convention. Colton and I will be going to the convention in June, so we're looking forward to that, to, to sit down, see some of these great cosplayers, comic book artists, comic book creators, and so much more. So be on the lookout for some interviews coming June, July from that whole event that we're going to. It's going to be great. But uh, without any further ado, here is my interview with John Engel. So with me today, everyone, is John Engel, uh, one of the masterminds of Three Rivers Comic Convention, as well as regional manager of New Dimension Comics uh, in the Pittsburgh area. So, what's going on, man? Thanks so much for joining me. Oh, I am. Uh, I, I first off, thanks for having the fun. This is awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just super busy. Uh, yeah, I've been up since like eight doing some things. Mm. Uh, now I'm trying to keep my dog from screaming uh, or barking <laughs> as we do this interview. So I apologize in advance. Um, but uh, yeah, man, we're just we're. We're just uh, getting down to the, the last bit of the show. The stores are doing great. We have free comic book day coming up. All kinds of stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's one of the the best days of the year is free comic book day. Unfortunately, where I'm at, there's no comic book store around me, so I really don't get a chance to get out there and grab something. But uh, whenever I lived up in Pittsburgh, I, I I am from the Pittsburgh area. I would stop. Uh, New Dimension Comics was one of the ones that I stopped in quite often. I mean. Not I, I wasn't in there enough to know everybody by name, but I did stop in there as much as I could because it was, to me at least, in the area, one of the best, if not the best, comic uh, comic book store there was. Which uh, which location were you? Um, the uh, um, we have six. Yeah, the so. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it moved um, from. Oh, um, when it was a century. Century three. three. Yeah, there we go. Right, I couldn't right, think right. of it. Okay. <laughs> century three mall. Uh, yeah, that one. I that... do not have the jingle. Like the jingle. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's a shame what happened there. It was a it was a pretty good location, and I always enjoyed going to the store there. But I think the new setup over at the waterfront now that's where it's, the waterfront I think is uh, definitely it, it, it's it seems bigger. It definitely seems bigger. Uh, it is. It, it is bigger. So. Yeah. So I definitely enjoy that. Before, I mean, the the one thing about this show and the reason why I was definitely excited to have you come on to talk to you is I love learning about people and how they've taken their love of something and bridged it into being creative or, you know, in some form or fashion, you know, taking what you love and making money off of it, essentially. And uh, you know, let's first get into your, you being a, you know, a manager, a regional manager for New Dimension Comics. What, sure. what got you to that point? Uh, so um, I was in school in Clarion for music business, uh, which I graduated with and have a degree in that. Um, and I had started working at KB Toys back in 2000, probably three, um, worked my way up in the management there after I graduated, I was the manager there and they were shutting down stores. So I eventually got pushed to the Pittsburgh market. Um, and when that shut down, I was already shopping at Century Three. So I picked up a part-time job there, um, worked there uh, while working a full-time job, worked there for three years became the manager of the Pittsburgh Mills location for three years and then became the regional manager. Mm -hmm. um, and in that time, um, it's been awesome. I made a lot of friends. I uh, met a lot of creators. Um, some creators are, I consider very, very close friends uh, or at least good friends. Um, yep, there they are. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, you know, and it's one of those things where, you know, I, I 
bought comics off a of spin rack back in grade school in my and stuff in my hometown. Um, and uh, I really didn't get like super, super into comics until I moved down here, but I'd always loved them and read graphic novels and things like that. College, you know, poor, not only am I a poor college student, I'm a poor musician mm. at that point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, my wife and I moved down here in 2007, and you know, we've loved Pittsburgh ever since. And, um, you know, I've, I've visited a bunch of comic stores uh, living here, and they're all great. This area is blessed by how many stores are actually in the area that aren't just ours. Um, you know, while, you know, some people think we're the, the, the big elephant in the room because we have stores that are 20,000 square feet. Um, you know, I, I locally, I, I have a shop a mile from my house uh, that I go visit. And uh, actually, the, the owner is a buddy of mine from college. So, you know, it, it's great. Just, you know, while, while I absolutely want you to support my company, I also... <laughs> The, the point of our show is that, you know, go support your local shop. It doesn't matter where you are. You know, we know our customers do it already, you know, and we, we have no problems with that. And we're friendly with everybody. Like, yeah. You know, yeah they, definitely. What, they, what do they say? Like rising tides raise all ships or something like that? Yeah. yeah. You know, that's something that over the course of the last couple of years, I've had the privilege of talking to a lot of different comic creators uh, for Spoiler Country and the Spoilerverse Network. And one of the things that we've, we constantly got back to was we have to support these local comic book shops, especially with what happened over the last couple of years, because the bread and butter is their comic book sales. And if they're not selling those comic books, I mean, look, I, I got a tablet right here that I could just easily get any comic I want on this tablet, but that's not doing any good for those local shops. So it's always important because there's something about those local stores those comic book shops that you don't get whenever you're getting things on on a computer online uh real quick i i was a hollywood video store manager for a number of years nice and nice. there is just something missing in my life because that's no longer there's nothing there's no video stores anymore yeah. and there was something about that about you know families coming in and i i remember so many times you know you'd have families come in and they'd say hey can you help me pick out a movie for my kids? Or, Hey, what do you recommend? And it opens up so much more in, in the, you know, just the universe of movies for people. Sometimes they hear things or see, or get told about movies or things that they don't know about. And that's the same thing with comic book shops. It's the same way that how that works. You know, very specifically with, with our company, like you can support us, but, and not even be in the area. Um, all of our new wall books, all of our graphic novels, all of our board games, our RPGs, um, <clears throat> they're all online on our website at ndcomics.com. And you can choose your own, your favorite store. Uh, you can shop one of the other ones. Um, you can get it delivered to your house. You can do it pick up in store. Uh, there's a lot of options. And if you're in one of our stores, we can now actually see the inventory of our other stores and can get you stuff pretty quickly. So oh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, anybody who uh, is a comic book fan and, and is looking for a way to get some comics, definitely head to their website. What is it? Uh, NDcomics.com. NDcomics.com. Yeah, That'll definitely be in the dimension comics.com. It'll yeah. still send you there. So. Yeah. It'll be in the link below or it'll be in the description below. The link will be down there below. <laughs> All right. Uh, now let's move on a little bit because the, the real reason why I wanted you on here is uh, what's on your t-shirt there. Three Rivers Comic uh -huh. Convention is coming up in Pittsburgh. And I want to know, so just like, you know, I, I asked you how you got from just being a comic book fan or, you know, a fan of, of all things nerd to being part of a comic book store conglomerate essentially <laughs> what got you to being part of a a comic convention uh that's not an easy thing to put together it is not it is definitely not um part of it is um like my my background with with music like i would put on concerts and things so i already knew how to do that kind of stuff and being a manager at the store we would do uh, one day shows um at both century three and pittsburgh mills and uh after the pittsburgh comic-con died um or became wizard world i guess um they did a couple years of that and then my boss and i were driving home one night um after a meeting at the bar and uh there may have been wings involved as well 
but um, we uh, were driving back, and we both kind of were talking about how, like, Wizard World is was kind of not what we hoped it would be to continue the Pittsburgh Comic Con uh, tradition. So we said, why don't we take a stab at it? And, you know, but we're going to make it fully comic focused. Like it's going to be um, similar to like Baltimore or um, Gem City and Dayton, where it's focused on comics and creators and publishers and then some vendors. Like we're not going to do, we, we, we all, from the get go, we said we're not really going to try to do celebrity, like movie star celebrities. Um, just because it was not really in our, our wheelhouse and they're really expensive. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we kind of thought about it. We gave it like a week and the next week when we had our next meeting, we were both like, yeah, I think we should do this. Um, but we need to do it the right way. And we, and my boss Todd and I, um, you know, we, we decided to, um, kind of take our, our mall show idea and, and blow it up for the first couple of years. And then, you know, <clears throat> bring in some people, see how it goes, build a name, and eventually get to the point where we'll be in, like, a, a, a bigger, better building, which is this year. Um, so the first three years we did at Century 3 in a um, about a 20,000-foot um, space that was underneath Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, and that was great. And then in 2019, since Century 3 was unclosed, uh, we moved down to uh, the waterfront in an old Macy's that was about 25,000 square feet and then uh, maybe 30. And then um, in 2020, we were originally going to be at the convention center downtown. Uh, the space we're going to be in is 40,000 square feet. Um, so it's, it's a lot more room and it's nice and it's laid out with nothing in it, which is even better. Like no random escalators to go around. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, it's, uh, you know, and then we were getting ready to, uh, to like, we announced that we we're moving down there, but we didn't really announce anything. And then the world shut down, uh, COVID kind of happened. And then we decided to do two outside shows last year to make it kind of better for social distancing and, you know, everything and if people felt safer. Um, so we went down and did that at the waterfront outside in the parking lot. And then we we're returning to downtown. Uh, well, we're, we're doing our inaugural downtown, but we're, we're returning to the announcement of moving downtown. Um, this June, uh, June 3rd and 4th of this year. It's going to be, it's going to be nuts, man. We have such a good guest list. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm taking a look. I mean, just a few real, real quick. Some, some notable ones. You know, one notable one in Pittsburgh for sure is cosplayer Samurai Jill. Uh, I saw mm -hmm. her on the list. Uh, we got like uh, the... a mile from my house. Like, we're <laughs> hey, maybe you can reach out to. You know, I've been trying to contact her to get her on the show too, but she never replies. So. <laughs> uh, no, and then you got the 504s or the 501st Star Killer yep. Garrison, which. Is pretty cool for those Star Wars fans out there. They'll definitely enjoy that. Uh, Comics World, I see. 3D Pro Shop. Uh, and the list does go on. I mean, it, it's, it is a huge list. And I didn't even get into the artist. The, probably the biggest name we were bringing in this year is Howard Chaykin, um, okay. who has done, like, Star Wars for, Mar for Marvel. He's yeah. done Suicide Squad, Blackhawks, American Flag, tons of stuff. Um, Rick Leonardi, who did Spider-Man 2099, created Spider-Man 29, also did... Uh, Cloak and Dagger, which um, uh, Spider-Man twenty ninety nine right now is looking to be uh, getting yeah. kind of reinvigorated with what's coming <laughs> later this year. Oh yeah, with the uh, the animated movie, like yeah. when I saw that that uh, trailer, I was like, oh yeah, this book's <laughs> going up. So, uh, Brett Breeding, who has worked on pretty much everything, um, inclu including with Ron Friends, he did a lot of work with Ron Friends back in the eighties and nineties. Um, including Amazing Spider-Man 252, which is the first Black Suit Spider-Man. So mm -hmm. if you have that book, you can get it signed by both of them um, at the show, because Ron will also be there. Uh, and he drew that book. Um, Daryl Banks, who worked on Green Lantern. Uh, Pat Olive, who's a, uh, another local guy and has done a lot of stuff. He's done Thor, he's done Barbed Wire, um, Catwoman, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Wayne Foucher, who's worked with pretty much everybody uh, as an inker, uh, he did uh, Impulse, he did Flash, he did Green Lantern, all kinds of things. Batman, um, Dave Wachter, who is uh, 
coming off the Iron Fist Heart of the Dragon mini with Larry Hama. He's doing some Star Wars for Marvel right now. Um, and he also did uh, the Jenica Ninja Turtle issue uh, from a couple years ago that was super hot. Um, Tom Scioli, who's you know local and has done image work. He's done Hasbro, uh, IDW stuff. Uh, his his Transformers uh, G.I. Joe is phenomenal. He also did that uh, Fantastic Four grand design. Um, and then we have Dan Mendoza, who did Zombie Tramp. Um, Maria Wolf, who's a hot uh, new Marvel cover artist. Uh, and you should really check out her stuff. It's very heavy metal. If you're into that, it's awesome. James Patrick, who did um, Kaiju Score for Aftershock. And he did uh, Batman Harley Quinn, uh, some Green Lantern stuff. He's a writer. Uh, Justin Jordan, same. He's done so much stuff for DC. Uh, and then we got like Howard Bender, who did uh, Action Comics and also drew our flyer, um, which is awesome. Uh, and. A great uh, uh, yeah, so so real quick, this flyer actually is three Pittsburgh creators put together. Okay. Um, so Howard did the the line work, and uh, Andrew Harmon, uh, who colored for IDW uh, and some other places, he colored it, and then Justin Birch, who's uh, a letterer who has worked with everybody pretty much but Marvel. Um, he lives in the area too, and he actually lettered the top. So, yeah. Uh, well, all three of those creators will also be at the show, and all the VIPs are going to get a print of this poster to get signed by all of the creators in it. Oh, that's so, awesome. Um, but most of our, like 99% of our guest list is on the, the website already, and, um, you know, we may or may not still have a trick up our sleeve to announce yet. So. Oh, excellent! I can't wait to see see what else is coming there. Uh, now, this year's this year's Three Rivers Comic Con uh, is June fourth and fifth at the David L. Lawrence Convention Center in Pittsburgh. Uh, so, definitely for those of you who are interested in going, uh, just head to threeriverscomiccon.com dot com to get all your information there, man. Uh, now, some other things. I mean, I, I do want to find out what is your ultimate goal with three rivers comic con like you know you were talking about not having these big celebrities and and i commend that because that's what draws the large crowds to those conventions uh you know there's another convention in pittsburgh and they get big names and sometimes they're maybe there were big names in the 80s or 90s but people still flock to go see them uh for you what is your goal and how do you how do you plan to keep the momentum going and people to keep coming back to Three Rivers Comic Con? There's a couple questions um, there. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay. I'm trying to think what how I want to answer this in the right order. Um, so so it, so it's funny. So my boss and I have different goals for the show. Like yeah. he doesn't really want it. He didn't even want it to be as big as it is now. He just wanted to have a show where he could hang out with his friends, make a cool beer sell some comics, hang out, meet some creators, and have some fun. I really want it to eventually become like the sister show to Baltimore, right? Mm -hmm. Baltimore is usually in the fall. It's a huge comic show. Um, and and it's Artist Alley's huge. And that's kind of like where I eventually would like to be. And this is like our next step by going to the convention center to get our foot in the door, see how everything works there. And if we can make it work for us to be bigger, cool. Um, but we just keep wanting to, uh, to up the, up the guest list every year. Like every year we raise the bar a little bit higher. Um, and we, we try to listen to fan feedback about what works and what doesn't like, you know, our, our panels have never been huge. So we try not to like go too nuts. You know what I mean? Um, but also, like, Pittsburgh has a huge cosplay community, so we've really kind of latched on to those guys, too. Um, so as you mentioned, we have Jill coming on Saturday, and then the next day we have the cosplay hobbyist who's named Erica. Uh, so they'll be the featured cosplayer each day. But we also have a guest cosplayer of Night Mage um, out of Ohio, and he's coming to the show. He is phenomenal. If you've never uh, checked out his stuff, check out Night Mage. Um, 
he is like a sheriff in Ohio and he does like, he's this giant mountain of a man, but he does like <laughs> the coolest stuff. He did this awesome spawn that you can see uh, you know, on our guest announcement forum. Like, oh man, he's just, he's just so good. Um, but yeah, and, we, and yeah, like I so said, we try to try to do different things like, you know, and now that we're in the uh, convention center, you know, we're, trying to hold on to things a little bit longer to see if they work out in a better way down there. Um, mm-hmm. So maybe panels will work now. I yeah. don't know. So, um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're also hitting this year with a lot more um, advertising than we have. Um, so traditionally we just have had social media plus um, a little bit of um, CW car, uh, commercials. Uh, so those will all return. Um, we we have uh, multiple stores in the area that are cool enough to let us uh, leave our flyers there. Um, a couple of the local stores in the area are actually setting up this year, which is really cool. And uh, we're getting some billboards. Oh. So, yeah. So if you're driving down Boulevard of the Allies or a Bigelow um, or you're down by the Amtrak station, you're going to see uh, a big freaking billboard starting in May. So That's great. It'll be a good time. Yeah. Now with that, so you're, you're talking about, you know, you, you sort of want to get bigger. I mean, you want to get bigger. You want to make it, uh, you're saying what I like a sister show to what Baltimore does. Uh, but there has to be for you, what is the, what is like the one get for you for your show that you think would put you to that, that tier or, or get you to that point? Um, I would say when I can get uh, no less than four publishers, and um, there are, there are very there are a couple very specific vendors that I would I would like to see start taking it up. But also, if I can get um, to the point where there are fifty or more people that have worked for Marvel or DC or Image that come to my show that uh, as as a guest that would mm-hmm. be where my my next level is gotcha. um, so i don't i don't know if i'll ever hit that number but you know it, we are we're still young it's only year seven <laughs> yeah oh man you gotta shoot high shoot high for sure right <laughs> is there any particular artist or writer that you want to like that you're just dying to get there oh geez that's a, i'm sure there's a whole bunch oh, of them oh man but... Is there one uh, that you just you just really want to get? I would love to have Matt Fraction and Kelly Sue Um I I got to talk to them over a Skype one time, and they were they were super cool. They did uh, they skyped in for a, a group that we had at one of the stores one night. Um, I would love to have I'd love to have Neil Adams, but I don't know if we're gonna have him. I don't know if he's gonna be doing a lot of traveling now after uh, after COVID. Um, I think he's pretty much just out in, out in California. Um, oh man, who else would be super awesome? Uh, I'd like to get like Todd McFarlane someday. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> That'd be amazing. He'd be, big, uh, he'd be a good good get. Um, but uh, I don't know, man. That's so hard because like I love a lot of the guys I really love aren't around. Like mm-hmm. Gil Kane, you know, I love his art. I'm a big Green Lantern guy. Uh, he's not around anymore. Denny O'Neill's not around anymore. Um, obviously, Stan Lee's not around anymore. Um, but, you know, oh, geez, like Jeff Johns would be another one. Uh, Donny Cates. Um, geez. Uh, a lot of the other guys, like, I kind of already know. Like, I already know Scott McDaniel, and he was, like, a big guy for me for, for Nightwing forever. Um, so... I don't know, man. Like that's a really. <laughs> well, like I really said, I mean, it's it, it, it's one of those questions. I mean, you're asking, you're. I'm asking a comic book fan. Oh, Gar- Garth Ennis. <laughs> Garth Ennis would be a good one. That if we had yeah. Garth Ennis come to the show, that'd be cool too. So, but you know, you ask a comic book fan, like, hey, what artist or or, or author do you want to see? I, I mean, there's <laughs> there's just so many to right. pick from. So, no, I completely, right. I completely get that. Uh, now, is there anything? in particular that you want to kind of say about three rivers comic con that maybe we haven't talked about here that you want everybody to know. Um, well, we do a custom beer for the show. 
um, at our VIP party. And uh, information of that is coming soon. Uh, we had a little bit of a hiccup with that, uh, but we should have um, all that information hopefully announced by like early April, maybe second week of April. Um, we have two cosplay contests, one on Saturday for adults, one for kids on Sunday. Um, VIPs are going to get some cool stuff, so make sure you check out that ticket. Also, our pre-sale ticket pricing ends um, May 8th, which is the day after, or the Monday after Free Comic Book Day. So you have through Free Comic Book Day to get our uh, current um, ticket pricing. After that, everything goes up by like three to three to five bucks. I think most of it. I think the VIP goes from forty to fifty. Mm -hmm. uh, VIPs also get thirty minutes early entry. They're going to get a variant from Source Point Press, um, and then some other goodies that we're still working out, um, and hopefully will arrive on time for being printed. Uh, <laughs> but uh, definitely check it out. Like it's 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 not just um, it's not just supporting local shops. It's also supporting local vendors. Um, we do have some guys from all over the Northeast coming. Um, our guest list is crazy good, um, and you're not going to find a show uh, with this kind of guest list um, without driving at least probably four hours uh, at the minimum um, from from the heart of the city. Yeah. Um, but uh, and don't let Pittsburgh parking prices dictate <laughs> your wanting to come here. All right, because. A, any garage in the city on a weekday is fourteen dollars for the whole day. That is thirty dollars cheaper than Baltimore all day, and that is like <laughs> sixty dollars cheaper than New York City all day. So <laughs> yeah, no, and and I've been to the convention center there. I mean, there's plenty of parking around there. I mean, you might have to walk a few blocks, but there's plenty of parking and plenty of options. So definitely don't let that. That, uh, it's also way going. easier to get through downtown right now because uh, a lot of a lot of the big corporations that are down there have people working from home. Yeah. So it's actually very easy to navigate downtown right now. Oh, that's um, good. But yeah, man. Other than that, I mean, I, I think I, I think I hit everything. Um, <laughs> uh, working. Oh, CBCS will be there to do witnessing and signature verification and oh, nice. grading drop off. Uh, nice. They're not doing grading on the spot, but they'll take it. Uh, they'll take it in the mail back to you later. I have mm -hmm. a couple things I'm personally bringing. What's um, the? Do you know there. what the, the the price is for that? So it depends on the grade, uh, and if you're getting it like cleaned and pressed. Okay. Um, so there's a bunch. There's a lot to verify. Yeah, like, but I I will tell you, I'm pretty positive they're a little bit cheaper than CGC, mm -hmm. um, but they are the number two grading company in the planet. Um, I, or or neck and neck with CGC, depending yeah. on how you like it. Um, some people just don't like their labels. Some people like their labels better. I don't know. Um, but they're they're very they're very good pricing. They're they're speedy. They're reliable. Um, and uh, they also do witness verification or signature verification without witnessing. So, um, if you have like a book that's signed by Stanley, for instance. And you're absolutely positive it's his. They will take it and they will verify it and they will, you know, put it in as, as signature with it. Um, but they've been doing this a long time and uh, we trust them. Um, yeah. And it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, we're also going to have um, a not just the 501st. We also have a Star Trek uh, team there too. Nice. Um, so make sure you check that out. The the, the ship is out of Greensburg. Um, and we're going to have a couple nerd cars, uh, for usual. We have a, a local guy that does some really awesome, uh, nerd cars. He's got a new one to premiere at the show, uh, at least premiere in Pittsburgh at the show. And I think that might be it. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. Pretty excellent. <laughs> well, before we uh we we finish up the show here, one thing I like to do with every guest that I have is kind of just ask five questions, uh, just to get to know the person a little bit better. Sure. And uh, some of them will be uh, comic related, some of them will be uh, pop culture related. Uh, but the first thing I did want to ask you is, what would you say has been the biggest moment for you for Three Rivers Comic Convention? Ooh. Um, outside of landing Chaken, um, probably, uh, okay. Okay. So 
<laughs> my, uh, it, this is going to sound really stupid. Um, but for me, it was, I am, it was our second year, I think. And I'm standing there in the Valiant booth talking to the Valiant person. And they're right beside the Black Box booth, which is Scott McDaniel's company. And all of a sudden I hear, John Engel, come over here and give me a hug. And it's Scott's mom. And if anybody knows, like, Scott McDaniel, he does not go anywhere without his mom. She is the original con mom. <laughs> she is awesome. Um, and she made me come over and give her a hug. But, like, for her to remember, like, I had only met her, like, three years beforehand. So for her to remember me like that was awesome. Um, that was there. Uh, or, um, or going to dinner with Robert Krauss and Mark Wade, uh, the night before a show and them just telling us all about all the stuff they're working on mm -hmm. and, and some of the stuff that wasn't even solicited yet. It was, it was pretty secretively cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty cool. You know, I, I'm yeah. one of those ones. I, <clears throat> being in the podcast realm, you know, I, I get stuck with people sending me potential scoops and stuff like that all the time. And, you know, I'm not one of those ones that loves to, to tell everybody, but I love to know that kind of stuff. I love to know what's coming because yeah. when I go to a movie or read a comic or something like that, or more so with a movie, I love gauging the reception of the everybody else there. Like I get more joy out of, for instance, with Spider-Man No Way Home that recently came out. You know, I, I was, I knew, and I think everybody pretty much knew that we were going to get the three Spider-Men back. But yeah. because I knew for quite some time, I was so excited to be sitting in that theater and for my kids, seeing my kids sit there and just, oh, you know, like that excitement in yeah. their eyes and, and the, the, the clapping and the cheering that goes on. For me, that's yeah. what makes the theater going experience so much fun. It's not, uh, don't get me wrong, I love being surprised in movies too, but uh, for me, that's what really gets my excitement going. And uh, so, yeah, whenever, if, if I ever had the chance to sit down and with somebody, whether it's a comic creator or something like that, and they, they're just telling me all the, the nitty gritty of what's going on, I'd be pretty excited because I'm like, hi, I know stuff that people don't. <laughs> oh, oh I, got a, I got another good one. Um, so this was year three, I think. And um, Bill Mesner Loeb's, I don't know if you know that name. Um, he uh, he was a, uh, an artist for DC back in the day. He worked on all kinds of stuff. Um, he, he also helped create the Max. And um, he lives in Detroit with his wife. And they hit some, some pretty bad times at one point and were um, like living in their car type thing. Like they didn't have a house. Yeah. Um, and a, a, a creator friend of mine got me in touch with them, and I was like, absolutely come to the show, like, put you in the hotel, da, da, da. Um, and they showed up, they showed up a night earlier than they were supposed to, so, because they thought it was a three-day show instead of a two-day show. Mm -hmm. So they showed up Thursday night, and I'm like, I'm on my way to cosplay karaoke at the Hard Rock. You guys are more than welcome to come. And so they, they come, they're there. Um, we raised a bunch of money for the, the Heroes Initiative. And then at the end of the show, because everybody that everybody knew who they were, um, we were collecting money for the Heroes Initiative, and we got permission to give them that money, just give it to him right there. Oh, wow. And, um, and you know, when when we handed him and his wife that giant wad of cash, because it was pretty, it's pretty hefty, um, you know, that was one of those feelings like, like this is, this is the best karma I can do at a show ever. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is, this is really what this community of comic people is about. This is what the heroes initiative is about. This, like you really understand the whole, the whole experience at that point. And to, and to know that, you know, people at the show donated to that because they knew that was going to happen was like a huge thing. And um, that was, that was definitely like top five moments from, three rivers that, that's me. pretty great that, that's incredible and i love seeing and hearing stories like that i think everybody does that, that's something that hey you, you guys should shout more often but i know <laughs> i know sometimes you don't want to brag about things like that also that's right yeah uh now next question what is your current favorite comic series running oh that's a good question 
<laughs> um. All right, I, I probably got. I have three. Um. So the new the, the current Spider Woman is absolutely fantastic. I've actually heard that. Um, I think, and that's why a lot of people are excited that they're talking about doing a movie because I've heard the current run is really great. Yep. Um, Scout Comics is putting out this book called Impossible Jones that I've been really digging. It's four issues in. Um, I really, really enjoy that book. Uh, and then probably the current Magic the Gathering book from Boom. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic it's not canon um but it's very it's probably the best art we've had in a magic comic ever <laughs> and definitely some of the best writing we've ever had. Uh, i i gotta say I'm a, I'm a little ashamed of myself uh, i was a huge magic the gathering player back in the 90s and to early 2000s and yeah. uh once i graduated high school actually my graduation money that i got was all spent on magic the gathering cards <laughs> not a not not a great moment for me there. I'll tell you that much. But <laughs> um, pretty sure mine was too. So it's okay. I've been playing since ninety four. So I had that's that's was... around when I started playing. And then yeah. when I got married and had started having kids, I kind of got out of it. I actually ended up selling my cards and everything like that. Uh, unfortunately, because now my kids are kind of getting into the whole card playing aspect of things, and I'm like, oh man, I could get them into magic. <laughs> But all that money to spend to get, <laughs> to get me and them cards. But I never knew that there was a comic series. That's where I was going with all that. I, I didn't know. <laughs> this is actually the, I guess it's like technically the, it's the third publisher that has had it. Um, but it's like the fifth or sixth iteration. Because uh, Topps had it first and they did like Ice Age and Fallen Empires and a couple things way back in the day. And they would actually have cards in the plastic. Hmm. Like it would come vacuum sealed. Um, then IDW had it around the first Theros. Uh, so they did kind of like a return to Ravnica Theros uh, section. And they did the cards too. Um, and then that kind of folded. And then now it's in Boom. And Boom's just doing like... It, it, it's so good. I know back in the day they were making Correct. like regular books and that was, mm -hmm. that's what I knew about. And I actually think read a couple of them back in the day, but yeah, I never knew that they, they had a comic line. That's actually pretty cool. All right, go moving more into the pop culture realm. Yeah. Star sure. Trek or Star Wars? Oh, God damn it. Um, <laughs> oh man. I used, I used to be able to say Star Trek for TV and Star Wars for movies, but now it's kind of blurred. Um, <laughs> I I consider myself more. I, I under I know more about Star Trek than mm -hmm. I do Star Wars, but most of that was because I watched a lot of the TV, yeah. um, and there was a lot more to consume that wasn't book form. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, I, I mean the nineties the nineties were consumed by Star Trek, and we didn't have any Star yeah. Wars during that essentially, except for the expanded universe. So I, I understand that. Dude, I, I, a buddy of mine sent me the other day this metal version of the DS9 theme, and I almost crapped my pants. It's so good. <laughs> um, so I'm going to I'm gonna say I'm a Trekkie slightly more than I am a Star Wars guy. So I'm going to go with Star Trek. All right. All right. That makes sense. Uh, how about DC or Marvel? And we're going to go movies with this one. Oh, movies, Marvel hands down. Like, <laughs> like, um, even if you throw the animated parts in there, which is where it would flip, mm -hmm. um, like the, the Marvel movies are just so more cohesive and um, tailored to more uh, what I like in, in a comic book film. Although I will say the Batman was freaking awesome. So. Yeah. Uh, I, per I mean, personally, I'm, I'm a huge DC fan, and that's kind of where I kind of stuck with comics for so long. Although when I was a kid... Hey, we're talking about spinner spinning racks earlier in the show. Uh, earlier, we were talking about it, and uh, at my local Giant Eagle, that's all I had was a spinning rack yeah. of Marvel comics. And the first comic I ever got was a Scarlet Spider comic, and that was like my introduction nice. into the comic world. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Marvel, especially Spider Man, has a special place in my heart. So I've I, I've really loved what Marvel's done, but I've always, I mean, my first film that i ever saw was batman in 1989 it was or i saw it in 1990 i think it was because i was like four years old 
And uh, yeah. that was the first movie I ever saw in theaters. First, you know, and I, I sat on my dad's lap watching reruns of, of the Adam West Batman. So, it, you know, DC was just kind of ingrained in me from a very, very young age. Uh, but no, oh, I completely get same, the, dude. Same. I, I get the love for, for Marvel. I mean, that what they've done cinematically has just been amazing to this point. And, you know, I, I see them, they, they can easily go another 10 years and still have all this success. So yeah, I completely. And, and I'll be honest. Like I, I like the Snyder verse. I thought his, his cut of Justice League was a little too long. But um, but it was a gorgeous movie. Yeah. Um, all four movies that it was in one. Um, but if if DC would be more consistent with their movies, um, and can and just like because I think they're good. It's just they're not consistent. Like they're like I'm gonna put one out and then it's gonna be two years and I get another one, and then we get like all these backed up ones from COVID and like this year we're getting the Batman. Flash and Aquaman. Well, no, like, this got pushed. Three. Flash got no. pushed to June of next year. Aquaman got pushed to March of next year. So this year what? we're getting, yeah. So we got Batman, we got Black Adam, and we got oh, yeah, Shazam. Shazam this year. Right. So those, those are the ones we get this year, which is a nice change of pace from getting one or two. That's it a year. So getting three is kind of nice. But then again, you but talked I will say, about like their TV though, their HBO stuff. Is yeah. freaking awesome. Like, I'm a huge fan of like the Doom Patrol stuff. <laughs> That's amazing. Maker was great. Dude, that, um, that show got me into to to looking into Doom Patrol comics. Like that, I, I knew about the comic, but I, I was like, ah, that's not for me. I check out the show and I'm like, oh man, I gotta check out what I mean it's it is <laughs> a bit different. <laughs> yeah. The, the, stick with the Grant Morrison run. It's a it's a it's very much so like a lot like more modern. Mm-hmm. Uh, more to, like a modern X Men take, which is what they were based on. Yeah. What X Men was based on, anyway, they were based on. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, final question before uh, before we get get out of here is: What is one thing about you that maybe nobody knows that you think is kind of interesting or weird about yourself? Huh. Um. <laughs> I mean, I I pretty much put my weird out there for everybody. Um, I'm the same way. <laughs> I mean, uh, a lot of people don't know that I've been that that I have a music degree and that I've been playing guitar since oh third grade, mm-hmm. um, and that I've been in multiple bands and I've played with bands. I've opened for bands that uh, a couple years later I go to see and they are opening for like Dropkick Murphys. Um, and stuff like that. So I've, I've opened for like that, that middle tier band. Um, and then I know a lot of, uh, musicians and like, like I've, I've hung out with Scott Ian on multiple times from Anthrax and we talked nerd shit the whole time. Um, and, uh, I guess, uh, here's another weird, interesting fact. My hometown is, uh, St. Mary's, Pennsylvania, um, which is the middle of nowhere. Right. (laughs) But is the second landwise biggest city in Pennsylvania, oh. Oh. second only to Philadelphia. Interesting. I yep. didn't know that it either. Only has a uh, only has a population of about 12,000 12, people. So, right, yeah. pretty crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, people when it, when you think of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Erie, yeah. State College, sometimes even, uh, or now thanks to the office, you know, Scranton, but <laughs> St. Mary, nobody ever thinks of St. Mary, right? Because right? even we didn't care about Scranton. <laughs> Not at all. Again, everybody, you know, Three Rivers Comic Convention is June fourth and fifth at the David L. Lawrence Convention Center. Head to threeriverscomiccon.com for tickets, information. And so much more. Everything will be down in the description below. Uh, John, thank you so much for joining me here. And I, I definitely want to get you on again and, and really dive into the, the comic book store side of your, your career and your life. Because, uh, again, like, like we were saying earlier, it's important to support those shops. It, it is really important. So I uh, definitely love to have you back on again. Yeah, um, I, you know, I had a great time. I will definitely come back on and uh, make sure you guys, you know, check out the show. It, it's it's not like big shows where you have to wait in giant lines for people. You'll be able to talk to these creators. It's great. It's, great. Um, it's cheaper than most of the shows in the city. So <laughs> that's also a plus. And uh, make sure you just support your local comic shop. Um, they are they are there to serve you. And they are there to, uh, to 
bring you all the nerd glory that is out there. So yeah. I don't really wish my dogs would be quiet right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. But I will definitely, hopefully I get to see you there at the convention. I will be there. My uh, my co-host and I, or one of my co-hosts and I will definitely be there. Uh, hopefully getting to, to, to meet you and some of the great, great content creators and artists and writers and everything that are there. Absolutely, man. And uh, this is really funny because we, our staff shirts are actually a Star Trek thing. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, look for me in the blue shirt because my the bo- my boss, who's technically the owner of everything, mm-hmm. he's the only gold shirt. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then me and the two other guys on my team, like my lieutenant, I have a commander shirt. They're going to have lieutenant shirts. They're all blue. And then everybody else is just a red shirt. A red shirt. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're going to have stormtroopers there. So I don't think there's any danger. <laughs> then. <laughs> oh, no. Not at all. It's going to be crazy fun. So. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, it's going to be a good time. We have a lot of great people. So make sure you guys come out, hang out with us downtown. Um, yeah, there's a lot of great stuff to do. There's great restaurants right around the corner. Um, but we're going to have a blast. And uh, if you're into comics or nerd stuff at all just come and hang out at least check it out i mean what else are you going to do on a weekend right? yeah absolutely it's gonna, <laughs> i think it's gonna be great so uh, again thank you so much for joining me here and uh talk to you soon yeah, thank you so much and there it is guys that's my interview with john i hope you enjoyed it i hope you uh if you can make it out to pittsburgh in june for three rivers comic con i think it's going to be a blast I can't wait to see what they're going to be uh, doing there. Uh, It's a bigger space than it has been in the past, so make sure you head out to Three Rivers Comic Convention June 4th and 5th. I cannot wait. So with all that said, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to all of you later.